Hello YouTube, this is going to be a tutorial going over the sort of masking transitions. I'm um, going to probably learn pretty much anything you're going to need for doing a masking transition. Unless very advanced stuff, but uh, we'll have some fun. Anyways, right now I'm going to be showing you four different types of mask transitions. Some of them kind of follow the same principles as the rest, but uh, it gets you good practice anyway. I'm also going to speed through any masking areas, really, because there's no point watching me do it. It's just slow and boring. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, first transition we're going to go with is the first example I just showed you there. Well, it's just a simple in the door, weird one. You can use it, it's very common when people use eye transitions, that sort of idea. And that's what it looks like, it's sort of just the moving door without the center frame and then of course you add a shake in the center or something or whatever you want to do. So let's get started. Obviously you're going to find the point on the clip where you want. Like I want this to be the showing area, like this is where it should stop or start. So we're going to take the frames, if we were to take that down, let's take it about 11 frames that way. And then we cut it like usual. And drop it down. So now we get this lovely little clip with absolutely no masks. I'm just going to remove the shake. Do do do. All right. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go into here, go to the first frame. Now, this is where we're going to select our mask area. I'm going to put the whole frame of the door out and maybe a bit cutting in here actually because I don't want to have to go round him and it'll be barely noticeable anyway. So I'm just going to speed through this bit. I'm literally just going to start the mask and finish it. Okay, now just going to point out these are going to be very quick and probably very shitty looking while I'm doing them, just as an example, so it's going to take up forever. Okay, but now that we have the center frame, we actually have the inside, but we don't want the inside, we want the outside frame. So we go to here, change that to negative, and voila, look at that, it's beautiful. Right, but it also looks a bit rough around the edges, so you can go into here, put the feather on, and I'd probably put it about one or two, one looks alright. And this is where our actual moving comes in. Obviously this isn't a moving frame, so we're going to make it move. We're going to go into the position, if my Sony Vegas doesn't want to lag, there we go. We go into the position, and we're going to zoom it in. So now, as you can see, you can't see it at all. It just looks like the normal clip. And now we're going to go to the end of our clip, hit restore. So if we do that now, look, we have what we had before. So it looks a little rough. Alright, so we're going to go into here and actually add a bit of a blur. Just so it doesn't look uh, a bit silly, is the best way to describe it. Uh, we get a linear blur. Vertical. Put it down to whatever you want. You know, you should know the basics of animating by now. Keyframe it to the very end. Reset it to zero. Now, all we're going to do is copy this and paste another one on top and we're going to go into here and untick the mask so now we have our solid thing again and obviously we're going to change this so I'd go in about, I don't know, one, two, two frames split the clip using ass delete it and then put it as a fade like fade it completely maybe let the little end bit come back in so now we have our transition and this is our first. So now we're going to move on to the second. Okay, now for the second example. This follows the similar idea. Pretty much is the same thing, but now we're going to have something come into frame instead of pulling it out of a frame. So, as usual, we've got the point where we want. This is where I want the hand, you know, to appear, because his hand starts moving in at the same time. So we've taken this clip and we've just dragged out the first 11 frames again with this top one. And all we have to do for this is again go into here, make sure you activate your mask. Again, if my Vegas doesn't want to lag. There we go. Activate our mask. 
And again, I'm going to speed up through this. All I'm going to do is mask out this hand. Okay, so I finished masking, and again I added the feather on. But this is something I wanted to show because some people don't know how to do it. Obviously, the center bit we don't want it here, but some but you can't connect it to the other mask. So the only way for us to fix this is to actually add another mask on this mask. So we go in here, simply click it all away. And just like in the first example, go in a negative. And now we don't have that stupid annoying middle bit. Okay, and again, we're going to do the same as we did in the last one, except instead of making it zoom in, we're going to make it zoom to the left, or move to the left with the camera, because we're going to have it coming in from the right side of the frame. Okay, sorry about that, Vegas was being a dick. Alright, so what we're going to do, move this hand out, so now it's no longer in frame. Go to the last frame. Okay. And we restore it. So again, we have the hand comes in and into the next frame. And again, to make it look better, you can add a blur, but you get the general idea. So, let's move on to a little more of a difficult one. Okay, this one's a little more complicated, but still fairly easy when you get the idea. Okay, so I've set down four markers, because I'm going to cut this clip into two, but it's going to have the first clip come in on the first marker, on the second marker, the second clip's going to come in, and on the third marker, they're going to move closer, like in the example. And then on the final marker, they slowly come in until we hit the final point. Okay, so... First we're going to open this up, again go to our mask, and I got a new recording tool so it doesn't lag like shit, it's lovely. Alright, so I'm going to guess that's about halfway. You probably should figure out properly before you do that. I don't care that much for the example. Okay, so I'm going to make it half the screen. There we go. We've got this side done. And now you're going to get this clip, make another copy of it and put it on top. Except this time we're going to go to the mask and make it negative. So now we have both parts. So, on the bottom layer, or you can call it the first one I guess. I want on the final frame, which is here, it to look something along the lines of that. Let's put up about four four dots. Well, yeah, about four dots off at the end. But I also want that to start. So we paste the original frame. So right now, if it's sitting still, we have this. We can see it's in the corner. But I want it to drop down from the top. So in this frame, I'm going to make it go down to the bottom. I'm sorry if this is a bit fast to follow, but you'll get the idea. So, now we have this. The first clip comes down, and by the final frame, it looks like that. So again, we're going to go to the top one and do the same thing, but we're going to put it on the opposite side and for a different time. So, it's going to finish... just about... there. So I'm going to do again the same thing, put it four frames out to this side, or four dots even, sorry. One, two, three, four, yeah, that will do roughly. And this time though, we've got a problem. This one, the first clip, has what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's seven frames. Whereas this one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15 frames. So in this one we're going to have to make sure our starting frame is 7 frames behind. What? To keep the consistency going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So this is where the original one's going to go. And we're going to put it up the way. So that means it's coming in from below. So now by that point, oh, 
my mistakes are. We're going to take that frame first to make sure we have the same distance. And then we're going to put it that way. So now we get this. On the first frame, that one comes in. Waits a bit. Second frame, this one comes in. And now we're going to go to the third frame for both of these. So, on the top one, this is where it's going to finish. So I want it to finish, I don't know, one dot, I guess. One dot from actually being in screen, as we can see from the top bits, there'll be markers. Which is fair enough, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames back and get that original frame again and paste it so it doesn't move in these frames at all, it stays the same. And then for those five frames it moves in and stops again. It'll stop right there. So we're going to do the exact same thing with this one. Again, uh, it's probably easier if we do it like this. Let's add a frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So now we don't have to copy the original frame again. So this one, again, by the final frame, is going to be one off again up here. There's a little dot to symbolize it. We've got one. And since we know that's going to be the f finished bit, we're going to go, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five. Five frames off the very end. Add a frame. And then by the very end, we're going to have it restored. So that means it'll go first frame, it'll enter. Second frame, the second clip will enter. Third frame, they both push in. And then by the end frame, of it, I haven't done the other one, but yeah, that will move in. And we'll eventually get that. There we go. So it'll come in. And again, we're probably going to have to do the same for this one. One, two, three, four, five. Add a wee frame. We go to here and we're restored. So they should both move in. Like that. Boom. And that's how we did, well, how I did that a lot of the times in one of the, my big AMVs, but still. And that's the end of that, so we're going to move on to the final one, and then use a free. Okay, this is what our final example looks like. Obviously, we've got this clip from Dragon Ball Z. And it's different than all the other clips we've done so far, because this one is moving constantly. So it's not just us moving the object itself. These principles that we're going to use for this are pretty much how you do any moving mask, like where the animation is still going on instead of being a freeze frame. And it's fairly simple. Obviously, I'm just going to do the first frame in normal speed, and then you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. And again, it's going to be done fairly poorly. But all we have to do is, on the bottom here, we've got each frame. We're going to cut... Oh, that was poor, but hey. We're going to go around this clip. And mask out just the eye. Again, change that to negative. Maybe add a bit of feathering. And obviously mask it better than me. So we get this. We have the eye. And again, we'll go through... Add a frame here, and then the frame changes. So when the frame changes, again, we have to go in and mask around again. As you can see, this is why it takes so unbelievably long for these type of things. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do all of the masks, because it will take, like, ages. But I'm assuming you guys get the basic idea from me doing this. That means, if we're looking at the first, obviously it's only the first two frames, but we have that little black bit, and this little black bit, um, we can get any clip, place it below it. As you can see, we can get this, the eye coming out, and just like we did previously, we'd copy this, paste it to whatever layer you're at, and then cut in how many frames you want and we'd simply untick the mask and fade it in and then we get that the eye would disappear or the clip that was in the eye will disappear 
So that's the basics of moving masks. And again, if you don't like the way that starts off, you can use the tactics we've used so far. Zoom in on the eye. And then you can manually, I don't know, by the third frame, have it zoomed out to what it was. So that means if we're doing it, it comes out of the eye again, and then the eye comes in. And we get our complete transition. And again, if you were doing this, I'd suggest you add blurs in. Just like, as I forgot to mention in the previous section, when you're doing all of these clips that come in in each frame, you will add blurs, otherwise it just looks kind of stupid. But anyway, that is all I've got to show you today. I'm hoping it was helpful, and uh, see you next time.